Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. As I've mentioned on several prior videos, I'm trying to rework my camp cook kits, something that I can use for a longer period of time, specifically when I'm wanting to do a little more complicated type cooking. And one of the things you definitely need is a good frying pan. Now I've looked at many options, in fact I own many options, and I've used them and they've worked okay, but I've been looking for something just a little bit different. Well I finally found what I've been looking for, it's not a new product, it's actually a rehabbed antique product, and I'm going to show you guys what I found and how I got it working just the way I wanted to. Stay tuned guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, I've tried quite a few different products. First is just a Cafalon 10 inch uh, anonized aluminum. This is uh, very sturdy. It's a pretty darn heavy, but it's bulletproof. If you're going car camping or something, this definitely could work. But this tends to not be very good from the standpoint of non-stick. Looking for a non-stick version, I got this GSI, um, probably about an eight or 10 inch as well. And it comes with a non-stick. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but this non-stick surface is junk. I mean, it has been demolished, and I've not used this a ton. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty disappointing to say the least. It's also fairly heavy and not exactly what I was looking for. This is delegated to kind of the, I'll use it if I need to. Bible. Next, I have this cook kit. It's the Ultra Cook Kit from Firebox Stove, and it does come with a little eight inch fry pan. You can see that I've seasoned it, and it works fairly well. It has a removable handle, which is nice for storage. And this does work pretty well, but I was still looking for something a little bit different, maybe a little bit more authentic. Lastly, I do have a lot of titanium cookware, and I got this Keith titanium fry pan. And although it works, it's a little bit flimsy. You gotta make sure you put that up. It works pretty well. Uh, it's easy to get hot spots with something like this, and it's definitely not non-stick. Um, it, it doesn't transfer heat super well, so it's easy to get hot spots. So titanium, although it's cool and it's super lightweight, not really what I'm looking for. On several YouTube videos, I kept seeing these older looking pans, uh, which many people called cool handle pans or coal handle pans. And I didn't know a lot about them. I had to research about them. And I decided to try to find one of those. They're made out of carbon steel. And there were three major companies that made them, National, LNG, and Acme. LNG is La Lance and Grosjean. Uh, it looks like a French company maybe, but, but many of these were made in America. I decided I was gonna go ahead and try them out and I need to try to find one and see what kind of shape it was in. It's not hard to find these, but sometimes they're in a little bit of rough shape. I found that most of them cost between 15 and $25 on eBay, and they range in size. You can go down to six inch all the way up to like 12 inch models, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted. Now, thankfully, I lucked into a pretty good deal. I think I got four different pans, a six inch, an eight inch, a nine inch, and a 12 inch. They were all in decent shape. Let me show you guys what I found for $30 plus $10 shipping, so $40 all in for all four of these. So these are the four that I got. You can see the biggest one I've not worked on at all. This is what they all looked like. Some rusting, pitting, and pretty beat up on the back. You'll notice a difference between these three pans here. This is the nine inch, this is the eight inch, and they are nice and clean. What I did was I took them just like this and I put them in a rust remover soak, like Evaporust, the one that I use is WD-40. Um, rust remover soak and I just soak them for literally 30 minutes and then I take them into the house and I use a brush wire brush with really really hot sudsy water and this is what it comes out like okay looks pretty much brand new I mean it really is nice you can see this is a national made in the USA if you can see that right there I'll try to zoom in for you guys now you can see a clear difference between this one okay and this one this little one the six inch I have seasoned already with oil and made it basically non-stick. So I'm gonna show you guys how I achieve this finish and you have to keep them oiled. We're gonna go outside and we're going to season it and then we're gonna fry an egg on it so you guys can see how non-stick it is naturally. Hope you guys can see it's a little loud. You can see it's nice and silver. What we'll do is get some oil. This is just canola oil. You can use any oil you want. You just want something that has a pretty high smoke point and you can see I have probably a quarter of an inch in there we're gonna start this up I'm gonna tell you guys what we're gonna do because it'll get loud you want it to start to get really really hot you want the oil to get smoking hot 
and then we're gonna swirl it around and you're gonna start to see the edges start to turn that dark, dark color. And that's gonna mean it's seasoned. Then afterwards, we'll pour out a little bit of the oil, not too much or it'll burn, and just a little bit and we'll do the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this started. There we go, it's on high. I do have it on max, we're frying up a gnat apparently. You can see it's starting to get warm. You want to be real careful when you do this and not spill the oil, all right? It's very important. Just nice and slow around the edges. I'm going to pull this off the heat a little bit and swirl real good. I don't want any of that oil obviously going on live flame, right? We're going to let it get nice and hot here. We're getting a collection of some bugs that we're, uh, we're frying up. As it starts to get really, really hot, it's smoking. I can tell you guys I'm getting a lot of smoke. And you want to just start to spread this around. We are just frying up the little bugs here. Slowly turn it around. You're starting to get some color. I don't know how well. Hopefully you guys can see that. You'll see it at the end when we're done. If you keep the edges nice and oiled, you can see right here we're starting to get some seasoning. I'm going to move this over more towards the center. That's what you're looking for, and you're gonna to try to get a uniform color all throughout, just like this over here. Again, guys, be very, very careful with an open flame and, fry and uh, oil. Starting to get good seasoning over here. So I'm gonna concentrate on back here. Just moving the oil and letting it get super hot, guys. Even though this is a cool handle pan, I have a glove on because it gets hot when you put this kind of heat on it. It's getting smoky too. So we're starting to get very good color all the way around. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour out a bunch of this oil. Hold on one second. Just swirling the oil, guys, to make sure everything gets done well. Now this, of course, is my first uh, effort doing this pan, and the more times you do this, the better it will get seasoned. Again, guys, I'll emphasize to everyone, just be careful, be smart. If you have a little grease fire, which could happen, don't put water on it. Have a place to put your pan. I have a large concrete area over here. I just put it there and it'll burn itself out. I mean, it's really not rocket science. Just don't throw water in there, whatever you do, like any grease fire. Now the key is to get that very bottom, you wanna get a very, very light coating of oil. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of this oil out and come right back again. Now this is where you wanna be careful. Just a little bit of oil in this area and it'll go dark pretty quickly. You can come back and clean all this, okay, just with a towel. So you can see, guys, it is just burnt, okay? You just get your paper towel. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna add a little bit more oil and we're gonna use the oil to kinda almost clean it and then rub your oil in, just like that. And we should have a pretty non-stick surface. So let's test it. And again, this will continue to get better and better. We're gonna test it by cooking an egg. And put it on kind of medium heat, add some oil. Got a very non-stick surface. All right. Perfect fried egg every time. One thing is, guys, when you're done, I got rid of our egg. Just make sure you don't use soap. Just wipe this down, just like this. All right. And keep a little bit of oil on the bottom. When you store it, keep some oil, okay? And you've got yourself an awesome, naturally nonstick pan. Just don't go after it with a scrub pad or something. I keep my gear clean, but this is one time when you don't want to clean it up. So like I said, I looked at lots of different options for a fry pan. I wanted something that was naturally nonstick, 
easy to keep clean and pretty lightweight. Overall, these pans are very lightweight. Let me weigh them for you guys. The smaller one is six and a half ounces. Eight inch model is 11 and a half ounces. And the nine inch model, which is probably the biggest you'd want to carry on your own, is 13 and a half ounces. Pretty reasonable weights for a very flexible product. The GSI is nice, but the non-stick finish absolutely fell apart and seems to be pretty much garbage. It's the first GSI product that I've used that really has failed. Uh, I treat my gear pretty nicely, and this non-stick surface is just not held up well. The titanium, like I said, is super lightweight, but it allows for hot spots. It's hard to get it to heat evenly, especially over an open fire. I really like the lightweight nature of the titanium frying pan. To give you a point of comparison, we'll weigh the titanium pan and it's seven ounces. So it basically weighs as much as the two smaller ones. It's good, but it's certainly not perfect. Now, a step in the right direction is the frying pan from the Firebox Stove Ultra Cook Kit. Uh, it works very, very well. It's seasonable, which works very well, but it's a little bit bigger than what I would usually need just for me. So I was looking for something a little bit different and I wanted to try out these cold handle frying pans. So I got exactly what I wanted with these cold handle fry pans. They are affordable, they're easy to pack, they're lightweight, they're naturally non-stick, and they're really easy to keep clean. You just have to make sure that you take care of the seasoned surface as soon as you achieve that perfect surface. I am super happy with these purchases. I'm gonna get the rest of them completely done. I'm waiting on a little bit more of my rust solution so that I can bring the level up in the pan a little bit to be able to cover this big, big pan, the 12 inch pan, but I think I can actually use this inside and it may live inside my house because it is naturally non-stick and it's larger than I would probably ever use out in the woods. I was looking for one, but it was hard to pass up a deal, $40 with shipping for all four and now have a lot of flexibility from the standpoint of sizes. If I'm going by myself or I'm going with my kids, we can always cook just what we need. If you're looking for an awesome frying pan to take out into the back country and you're willing to put a little bit of work into fixing up an older antique type piece of gear, this is definitely something you should look into. I look forward to using them for many years to come and you'll see them in a lot of videos coming up. So search eBay for a cold handled skillet. Again, the main companies are National, Acme, and LNG. Seems to be a lot of them out there. You can also search your local antique shops. When I bought these four, one of them, the handle was a little bit messed up and I ended up taking it apart. It was very simple to do. Taking it apart, banging it back into shape and getting it just the way that I wanted it right here on the side worked out absolutely perfect. So if there's a little bit of damage, know that you can take off the handle, fix it, and put it back together without much problems. So what do you think, guys? You like this video? Is this something that you're interested in? Is this a product that you thought you might want to check out but you didn't know a lot about? If you like the video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up down below. Really, really helps, guys. I can't tell you how much it helps our channels if you like the videos to hit that thumbs up. I'll admit that not the best sometimes. I'll watch a video and I really like it and I'm sometimes a little too lazy to click that thumbs up button, but I am making an effort to do it as much as possible because I ask you guys to hit the thumbs up, I'm gonna do the same. If you don't wanna miss any videos, hit the subscription button. If you wanna be absolutely sure you don't miss videos, hit the ding dong bell. That way, my videos will always show up on your feed. Guys, I really appreciate the growth. We recently hit 20,000 subscribers. I don't know exactly when this video will come out, but it was around the time when I hit 20,000 subscribers, which is pretty awesome. I am planning a giveaway. I'm not sure exactly when that'll be with everything going on, but it will happen eventually, hopefully in the next couple of months. I'm trying to decide exactly what I want to give away. So give me a little time. We're going to come up with something good. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.